Hi, I'm Microsoft Mike. Yesterday was day one of Amazon Prime Day, and today is day two, and I thought I'll make a video showing all the different steps behind making a 3D animated short film from start to finish, and explain them as simply as I can, so that, even if you're not from the animation and visual effects industry, you'll be able to get an idea of what it takes to make an animated movie. Oh, and there's a very cool surprise at the end, so make sure you watch it all the way through. Brought to you by MGM Studios, present the GameCube intro bloopers. Now streaming on YouTube. So, first things first, the most important part of making any film is a good story. If you don't get your story right, then no matter how great your film looks, people will not enjoy watching it. Make sure your story is good and that it works, before you move on. And trust me, even if you think it works now, it's going to change its hug as we move on with the production. So the first thing we do, after we have our story is write it in a script. It's important to transfer your idea into words as soon as you can, so that you can spot any issues with your story, before you get into production. There are a few programs you can use for writing your scripts like Final Draft, SelfX, or Scrivener. My boss personally likes to use Microsoft Word, which is probably a good start to writing scripts professionally like Paramount Pictures, but the program doesn't really matter. Then, once I wrote my script, I try to create as many concept art pieces as I can to start establishing the visual style for the film. And when I say I, I mean my concept art team made out of awesome artists who are the ones creating all the concept art for the film. That's an early fun step and the first chance you get to see parts of your film come to life on paper. It's all about exploring and trying things out. Next is creating a storyboard, which is probably one of the most important steps in figuring out your film. Storyboarding allows you to look at your film as a whole and spot story and pacing issues. Making one also provides you with something you can show other people for feedback. Most people react better to a storyboard than a script. At this point, I tweak my story and make changes, until I'm pleased with the boards and ready to move on to making an animatic. An animatic is the movie's version of your storyboard. Storyboard is more like a comic book, and animatic is like a movie. You bring all the boards into an editing program and edit them with the correct timing. Add some temporary music and sound effects, just enough to convey the different story beats. When you're done with that, you have the first version of your film, ready to watch. As great as a storyboard is, an animatic really gives you the first glimpse of what your film is going to be like. Show it to people again, get some more feedback. Tweet the boards, the timing, and the pacing, until you're very happy with how the film works. Then it's time to get into 3D. We start with modeling. Basically creating all the digital models for the film. The environments, the sets, the props, and of course, the characters. We use the concept art and model sheets we created earlier and model based on them. The models, when first created, can't really do much. We can place them in our scenes, but they can't move, until we rig them. And that's our next step, rigging. When we talk about rigging a model, we mean creating some kind of a digital skeleton with different controls to move it around. Before we rig our models, they were like statues. But now they are more like action figures, only with much more nuanced motions. The rigger makes sure we have different controls for each part of the body and face, so we can create every action and expression we need. Then we bring our rigged models into the 3D program and start creating our shots. We place all the assets where they need to be, and create a 3D camera to capture the shot. We position the cameras and characters in place, just like we would have, if we were shooting a live action movie. And then it's time to bring life into the shots with animation. Before I start the actual final animation, though, there is one more important step in making sure the story works, and that is creating a previs, or previsualization. This is the next incarnation of our animatic, this time using your 3D models. We set up all the shots in the 3D program with all the final camera angles and motions and create very basic animation for the characters, just enough to convey the action they are supposed to be doing. Then we bring all of these shots to the editing program, just like we did with the animatic, and we now have a previous version of our film, with the correct 3D models and camera motions. 
this is really the last step you can still make changes in, because animation takes a very long time and would be a huge waste if we had to make story changes after that. So again, I show it to more people, get some more feedback, and make sure I'm completely happy with the film. And now it's time for animation. Animation is, where we finally bring life into the film, the characters start to move, and we can see the soul of the film come to life in front of us. It's an amazing thing to see, but it also takes a lot of time, and done incorrectly can ruin your film. Bad animation is like bad acting. Even if the writing and story are solid, people won't see it, if the delivery is wrong. The way we animate the characters is by moving the controls we created, when we rigged the models. We manipulate those controls to get our characters in the right pose, create a keyframe, which captures that pose in the computer, and then we move the controls to the next pose, and repeat. This of course, allowed more technicality to it, but this is the gist of it. Then, before we can export our shots, we need to texture our models. That means creating different materials we assigned to the different parts of models. Some that simulate metal, some plastic, and even a few for skin. We give them the right colors and light up our shots with virtual lights, replicating as closely as we can how lights work in the real world, one major light, for the whole scene acting as a sunlight, and a few spotlights are on our points of interest, just like a movie set. Then, when our shots are textured and lit, we start rendering. Rendering is the process of the computer calculating all of the data in our scenes and creating still images from it. We then take those images to a compositing program like Nucor After Effects, extract the necessary data and pictures, and combine them to create the final images. This process of rendering and compositing is very technical, and unfortunately, too complicated for me to really get into in this video. But if you're interested in that, search these two terms on YouTube, and you can find some in-depth tutorials on how the process works. So back to our images. Once we have them, we bring them back to our editing program and replace our previous shots with our new finished shots, just like we replaced the animatic shots with the previous. We are now able to see our finished film on the editing timeline for the first time. But it's not really finished yet. We need to do some color correction and grading. Color correction is the process of manipulating the colors of each individual shot, so that it matches the one that comes before it and after. We also make sure each shot doesn't have parts that are too white or too black, basically working, so that we get a consistent and correct color all throughout the film. Then we grade our film, which is the more fun and creative part, in which we try to create a visual style for the colors of the whole film, to give it a distinct look. If you're trying to push the pinks and purples in any film and create some kind of a washed out look with pastel colors that you really like, you'll know what I am talking about. Then, before we are done, there are two major things we have to take care of, and ones that we've probably been working on all throughout the production, and that is sound design and music. If you've been working with your musician from day one of production, making sure the music fits what you're trying to do with the film, and making sure that the film works with the music too, you'll know what I mean. A lot of the timing is dictated by the music. Music is not usually something you can slap on at the end, I prefer to have it with me throughout the production, so it becomes an integral part of the story. And then the sound designer finalizes all of the film's sound effects like foley, ambience, and voices, as well as mastering and mixing the final audio for the film. So this was a very quick overview of what it takes to make an animated short film. In terms of logos, we have a cool surprise for you. Starting July 22nd, we will upgrade every single logo blooper series, along with the shorts, non-audio related, to live action, puppetry, 2D animation, CGI animation, or stop motion animation. If you enjoyed this video, you're probably going to like this super cool surprise. All of this may take a lot of time, but trust me, it will definitely blow your mind when, with it, we update you. Please subscribe to STC Fetish Muffin for more great content.